Okay, my mud fossil friends, a big update, huge impact. Going to show it right now. We're going to build a nuclear core, electron flooding. The nuclear core is not positive with neutrons. It is completely 50-50 plus a little extra negatives. We're going to build one right now. It's called electron flooding. I'll be getting into this in great detail shortly. Uh, and I'll show my old was was the um, eggshell version where the yolk was like all positive and the eggshell was all negative and then you had a space between there and then where your electrons resided now you're going to have a snowball when we get done you're going to see a little snowball in here which coated with with negativeness and we're going to do that right now so you are going to build an, a, an atom right now all right it's like yogi Berra would have said it's so simple it's almost impossible to grasp. Now, what do we have? We have a nuclear positive flooded core. Well, the electrons flood the positives. So there's your positive right there. All right, can you see that? Let me get up a smidge up here. Now, and it is surrounded by negatives. So let's put another positive here, a positive here, a positive here, and a positive here. Well, now the negatives are going to flood it, because negatives are the things that flow. The positives are the things that congeal. So we're going to have another negative here. We're going to have another negative here. We're going to have another negative here. One over here. We're going to have one over here. One over here. We're going to have one over here, and one over here. And you see what you see right now? Every positive is completely surrounded by negatives so let's count them out very simple very easy there's your positive one two three four surrounding it there's your positive one two three four surrounding it. one two three four surrounding it. one two three four surrounding it and you always end up with negatives on the outside so let's say we even added one more here one more right there positive it's going to get flooded all of a sudden it's going to get slammed with one of those that's all it takes to cover it up one all right and if we had another one came over here that would only take one and then if we had one here that would only take one so let's just do it let's just do it so one comes up here one comes here one comes here and we're going to cover them all up with just one more it becomes like a crystal structure and they're going to jiggle around until they form a ball and then one or two more are going to come in this guy's going to say can i come in here and they say no and he said well i'm coming i'm staying he said well you, you're you're on the edge you're what we call going to call an isotope and then another guy's going to come over here and he's going to say you know this looks pretty attractive i'm going to come right over here can i come in here so no 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 get out of here and he said one of you guys are going to go maybe both at the same time maybe we're just going to explode because now we are radioactive that means we're going to throw you out of here out of that exclusion zone because all the rest of them say we want to get there too how do we get there they said we well, can't come here these guys who shouldn't even be here we should have one for each of us and then a little bit extra to keep you guys in that cloud that's a stable atom once you start throwing a whole batch of extra pieces in there you got instability you got radioactivity let's take a look well let's take a look at this this is what I say the particles are and this is what Rod picked up in his light research with the uh, Venturi and they come out looking like this and they're spinning and you can see a little coming up the top and the bottom a little spike as they spin and they will attach together here let's take two of these well, let's let's take a quick look and then we'll get into the other I already did this stuff so let's now, I don't know, honestly, if there's an upspin and a downspin, how the difference is, whether the upspin and downspin is controlled here, and then they break off like that. It's, it's still a mystery to me. But I can tell you right now, that will not go together. But it will go together that way, and every single piece will fit together like a Rubik's Cube. And you drop it this way, every fit fits together. You drop it this way, it fits together. It is literally a Rubik's Cube of chemistry at this point right? that's what they work like and then you take another one you add it to here you're going to have 
a, a, all kinds of different reactions here. Okay, so right there, you've got your everything's going to work together there, and you've got your your reds at the 90 degree angle. You add another one here, it'll be it'll just fit right in there. Okay, and you start to make a pattern. Whoops. All right, and then you start keeping adding them, and let's just keep doing the same sort of thing until you get lines running this way and running this way of positivity and negativity. That's what that's what it's all about in my world. And you see me have them up here, you have them down here, you have them this way, that way. It's it, That is the nuclear core. Once you get up to a certain number of these particles, it becomes stable. Or otherwise, they're just sort of frequent resonance frequencies. But once you hit a certain amount, they're not pushing back and forth each other. They're just sort of sitting there easy. And then a few more of them come thrown in here. And the next thing you know, they're going everywhere. Okay, my friend, this is going to be painless and quick. Atomic theory. Look at all that stuff. Some of them don't even make it. This, this one says... 1 AMU, this one says 1.00728, anyway, we're going to go with a certain number of AMUs, which is the 1.0073 for a proton. That is acceptance in my world. Now, what do they say, though? This is the Bohr model. It says one gigantic, huge, positive proton, which only has one electron volt. It weighs 1.0073 atomic mass units, and that's a proton. Now, what does an electron weigh? It weighs 0. 0.00005, well, 0. 0.000549, it's actually 54836, something like that, atomic mass units, but let's go with that, 0. 0.000549. This is 1, that is 1836. That's the Bohr model. Same electron volts. I say no, absolutely not. That proton is not what you think it is and here's what it really is okay my friends clear your mind this is very simple we just saw the Bohr model one gigantic proton with a little bitty electron forget it doesn't exist electron flood theory states that every proton and every neutron and every nucleus is nothing more than a snowball of particles. And some of them are positive, some of them are negative, and they know how to find each other and snap together solidly. And I have drawn up the, and we will do it, I'm going to make one up and show you exactly how these cores are built. It is simplicity extraordinary. Now, why do I say this? Because they said that a proton, when I say they, I'm saying still the experts, and they say that a proton is one big chunk of positiveness. I say no, it is 50-50. And 50 of what and 50 of what? 50 of positives, 50 of negative. It adds up to 1836. Now, I'm showing not 50-50. I'm showing one low, one high. And this is what happens when you have an isotope. If they were exactly the same, you have 100% stability. 918, 918, perfect. When they go one over or one under, you get a proton that is reactive. Right? It's positive or it's negative. So, in the real world, there is no such thing as a proton. There's just a ball of magnetism. And the particles attach together, and for a hydrogen, there would be 1837 or 1838, something like that. And 1836 or 37 of them is the nucleus, which is the hydrogen um, proton, is what they say. It's not, not a proton. It's half and half electrons and positrons and then one electron way out in the orbit, trying to get in, but it says, no, I already got an extra electron or two. All right. Then you go into isotopes, and they go all crazy things. So we're going to get there in a minute. But here's what I say exists as nuclear particles. 918, 918 is neutral to me, and I don't know what I would call that. I would just call that 
a neutral particle. But because then you get into your proton, proton, which is heavy into the positives against the negatives. It's got extra positives or less negatives, one way or the other. But it's going to be positive net. Then you get your electron positive net, net negative particles more than the positive part. That's all I can say. I'm not sure where they fit exactly identically. They might have ten less and ten more. I don't know. But it, the net negativity, anything coming in is going to sense negativity. Anything coming in is going to sense positivity. So if I come in with a negative, snap. If I come in with a negative over there, get away. Same size particles, you get away, you come to me. Okay, that's magnetism, that's attraction, that's bonding, that's nucleophilic reaction, that is soluble morphism, that is every single interaction of everything. It's everything. It's, it's this right here. It's moving through the air. I'm bashing against particles that are... This thing here is negative on its surface, and I will prove that. 100% negative. Zero exists in the open space that is positive on its surface. Zero, that is my statement. Let's investigate it. Okay, I just realized this was from a long time ago. This was on my, my stupid face. And I didn't know what the core was like. And the core is made of particles in in a crisscross, plus minus, plus minus, plus minus, swish, 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 in all different directions, in like blocks, and then the outside, complete outside, is covered with electrons. Yes, I was right, but the core is not one chunk of positiveness, and then surrounding it is the negativeness. No, it's interspersed like this, and then at the outside end, you end up with uh, uh, electrons surrounding it, because the only things there are that are free in space are electrons. Some electrons are bound to atoms, yes. Some electrons are free to create heat, electricity, light, and static. We know that. We walk through the air, we collect static, pew, right to ground. The Earth wants electrons. Light, electricity, gravity, it's electrons being pulled to Earth magnetically. Electrons flood this positive core. Well, that's wrong. See, this is so old, it won't even wipe off of here. <laughs> I did this, I don't know, I just found this. I was going to wipe it off, and it wouldn't wipe off, and I realized maybe I should tell you, how, because I don't remember when I said this, but it obviously isn't right. It was the same theory. But it wasn't correct. That the, this is not correct. That's the only part that's not correct. And I've corrected that since now. So the particles are attracted to the electron flooded region as a cloud. That's these. They go into this region trying to get to these negative surface, which this is going to be a negative surface. And this is where we get into surface topography, as I'm going to call it nuclear surface topography. And by that, I will show you what I mean. I mean that there might be a, a one sticking up higher here, and one sticking up over this way here, and one sticking up over here, and, and such. And then they will attach, the cloud will change in respect to how this topography exists. And I will show you how, why I'm talking about topography very soon. But anyway. Uh, electron flooded region as a cloud. This is a cloud. Now, therefore, it appears that most, therefore, it appears that the positive particles must be independent of the electrons. And I did end up, end up with that, yes. They can charge separate. And, and again, that's a long time ago, too. This, I can't get that stuff out of there. It was so long ago. Um, anyway, everything's right, except 